Rob is back now, and we want to take a look at your email questions. And the first one comes from Paul. Paul is asking, is 10% too much to have in commodities? So explain the difference between commodities and equities for those of us who may not know. Sure. Um, there's different types of assets. There's stocks, there's bonds, there's real estate, there's cash, and there's commodities. There's other ones like baseball cards, you can imagine, <laughs> right. artwork. Um, commodities are a great asset class because they can hedge inflation. They're sometimes decoupled from the stock market, so the stock market can go down, and yet commodities can go up. And they include things such as? There's three groups. There's metals, there's agricultural, and holy mackerel, oh, energy. So I, <laughs> okay. I almost forgot that one. So that's like, uh-oh. Um, and a lot of people see, as our economy recovers, demand for commodities will go up. And as demand goes up, prices tend to go up. So 10% of your portfolio 30 years ago would have been crazy because they're incredibly expensive. But modern age has incredibly lowered prices on commodities. So you can buy an ETF or a hard asset mutual fund, and you can get exposure to commodities. I do like energy commodities right now, and I do like precious metals. Yeah, you've mentioned energy, especially with BP kind of bringing down all of the energy stocks or the oil yeah. stocts right now, right? A lot of the smaller drillers aren't going to be able to do business in the Gulf because cost and insurance are going to go up. So that's going to drive competition out, which drive demand and cost for oil higher. So so it's going to be more expensive to get out of the ground. So you're going to see alternatives like Suncor, which does oil sands in Canada. That'll become more attractive. Natural gas in America will become more attractive. But it's just hard to know which one, which ones of those to select because yeah. there's a storage issue. There's still a collection Trans issue on the energy transportation. Issues, yeah. Absolutely. Um, How do you know which one to pick? I think the, the, what we know right now is that the costs in the Gulf are going to go up. So you want to stay away from the smaller players there. Okay. Um, and yes, there will be winners. Like um, suddenly, if it costs to, you know, hundred dollars to refine a barrel of oil. That if the price of oil goes to 150 a barrel, then suddenly we'll be able to get it out of the sands of Canada a little bit easier than the Gulf per se. So um, the Gulf is is helping Canada enormously. Okay, let's look at the next question. This yes. one comes from Dolores. Dolores says, "I bought Tesla at twenty six dollars, and now it is below the IPO price. Help." She uh, says. She wasn't listening to me on this show. Yeah, because you have not been a strong supporter of Tesla. It's below the IPO. So it opened at 17. It goes to 26. That's where she bought it. Now it's, it's at 16.15. Yeah. It's a manufacturing company. I would look to sell it into strength. If there is any strength, you don't want to own it. It's a manufacturing company. If you want to own manufacturing, go own Ford. It's not a technology company like Google. But does this signal a problem with the electric car companies in general or those who are trying to be in that, in that I, area? I think so. Um, I think uh, when you're going to be selling a vehicle for $50,000 and you and I can get something that's similar for thirty thousand uh, dollars. Tesla will become a luxury product for the celebrities. Okay. All right. Well, you can send your email questions to Rob. All you have to do is send it to Rob at robblack.com. We'll be right back.